a project that anybody can do, tooling really thin leather, painting techniques, and we're using scrap. What more could you want? That's coming up. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Reeks. This is Weaver Leather Supply. Today, I've got a project for you that anybody can do, especially if you have a basic understanding of how to run a bevel. We're not even really gonna be using a swivel knife all that much. And if you or somebody in your life likes to read, well, this is gonna be right up your alley. But first, we've got three questions we need to answer before we get started. What are we doing? What are we not doing? And what are we using? So let's jump into that. So what are we gonna be doing? Well, you've already seen the thumbnail, so you know that we're gonna be making this butterfly bookmark. But what you couldn't see in the thumbnail is that this bookmark, it doesn't just stick down in the pages. It actually has this little saddle on the, on the back here, and that slips down over the corner of the page to hold it in place. So the second question is, what are we not doing? Well, we're not gonna be adding a lot of depth to the bookmark. It's gonna be in between the pages of the book. Uh, butterflies don't naturally have a lot of depth to them anyway, except for the body in the middle. And it's gonna get flattened over time because it is in between the pages of a book. So we're gonna start with the end in mind and just work from the idea that this is gonna be a relatively flat project. The other thing is it's pretty thin leather, which leads us to our next question. And that is, what are we using? So one of the things you've asked for in the comments section is videos on how to tool very thin leather. And this is perfect for that. Butterfly wings, obviously they're very thin naturally. So what we're gonna be using for the butterfly portion of it is a two to three ounce leather. Um, that's gonna give us the effect that we want. And for the saddle on the back, we're gonna be using one to two ounce. That's gonna keep it as thin as we can. Um, but at the same time, it's gonna give us something to work with. So where are we gonna start? Well, pretty much the same place we start on every project, and that's the prep steps. We need to tape the back, case the leather, and then trace the design onto the leather. From there, we can go straight into beveling. And this is kind of a big difference from what we might normally do. A lot of us, including me, are typically gonna grab our swivel knife first and cut the design into the leather. With this being two to three ounce leather, you could definitely use a swivel knife on it, as long as you're careful. But I wanted to show you, you don't always have to go straight to the swivel knife. Sometimes you don't even have to pick up the swivel knife. You can go straight to beveling or a modeling spoon and do the majority of the project with that and never touch your swivel knife. So why are we able to skip the swivel knife on this project? Well, the main reason is that the butterfly really doesn't need a lot of depth. Yes, you could add quite a bit of depth to the body that's in the middle, but the wings are relatively flat and this is gonna go in a book where it's gonna get smashed and flattened over time. So we really don't need the depth that a swivel knife, you know, gives us the ability to create. So since we're going straight to a, a bevel and we're skipping that swivel knife, you might ordinarily expect me to suggest that we start with a steep edge bevel. I really like the crisp line that the steep edge gives us. But in this situation, the butterfly really doesn't need that depth and we could run the risk of punching through the leather with that steep, especially an extra steep bevel. So we're just gonna use a, uh, a traditional bevel. We're gonna work the spots on the wings and we want the bevel to go to the inside of the spot. We want those to look inset, not raised up.
The next thing is we're gonna grab our modeling spoon and use it to feather the inside of those edges. Now, when I say feather, I don't mean like an actual bird feather. I mean, we're just gonna soften and uh, shadow those edges where the wings touch the body in the center. Now, this is gonna be something that's very, very subtle at the end. So it's not like you need to stress over this or put a huge amount of effort into it. We're just trying to smooth out and create a little bit of depth there so that when the light hits the butterfly, we can see the difference there. Once we've got that done, we're gonna grab our swivel knife. Now, this is really the only time that we're gonna be grabbing our swivel knife and using it on this entire project. And what we're gonna do with it is we're gonna use it to cut out the outline of the butterfly. Now, you might be asking yourself, why would I wanna use the swivel knife to cut out the outline if I'm just gonna be cutting this thing out anyway? Well, what happens is when we create that groove with the swivel knife all the way around the butterfly, it makes it a lot easier to guide our craft knife as we go around and cut the butterfly out. So essentially, we're making the next step that much easier. So the next step I know is one of those that a lot of you absolutely despise and dread. And for the most part, I'm right there with you. And that is skiving the edges of the butterfly wings. Now, why would we want to do this? Well, butterfly wings naturally are pretty thin and pretty delicate. And we want to create as much of a realistic look as we can while still understanding, yeah, this is a butterfly that's made out of leather. So I'm going to go ahead and skive the edges of mine. The rules are always the same. Fresh blade in your knife. You want the, the leather to be somewhat on the dry side so that the, the blade can bite in fairly easy. And then just go around and on this project, you're just going to take small amounts of leather off so that it, you know we're thinning out the edges. We're not taking huge chunks off. And we're going to keep working it until we get the look that we want. Now, after that, what you're probably going to notice is that the edges of those wings have all these little fuzzies sticking out. And if you start going in there and trying to pick them off or something like that, it's, it's just going to make the situation worse. You don't want to do that. It's a very simple solution. Just grab a lighter, get the flame near that little fuzzy that's sticking out, and it'll disappear with no problem. Now we're gonna go in and very gently burnish the edges of the butterfly. Now, if you really, really skive the edges down pretty thin and got that nice feather edge all the way around, which is amazing if you did that, you might wanna skip this step. But mine have a nice edge on them. They're thin, but at the same time, there's enough left there that I can burnish the edges. So I'm gonna go in with my needle bottle and the token oil, apply it around, and just take my time and gently work in the burnish all the way around. And this is really gonna emphasize the whole idea that burnishing is not about pressure, it's about friction. So you don't wanna be pushing really hard on these thin, delicate wings. You just want the friction going back and forth until you get the edge that you're looking for. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and use gum trag on the back of the butterfly and that DIY slicker that I showed you in the last video, and let's slick out the back of the butterfly. So now we get to the part of the project that I really enjoy, and that's painting. Now, I enjoy all the different parts of leather work and leather craft, um, everything but skiving, right? But painting seems to be the one that really brings the project to life. And for that reason, it is one of my favorite steps. And for this one, we're gonna start very simple. We're gonna use a flat black from Angelus, and we're just gonna work that black in on the wings around the spots.
Once we've got that done, we're gonna drop in some Angelus yellow onto the spots on the wings. Just know it, it might take a few coats. Just go slow and, and get it in nice smooth edges, a nice solid coat. This is the base coat for all those spots that we're gonna be working and bringing to life. So there's a couple of small spots on the edges of the wings. Go ahead and take the yellow and hit those so that we can start working on those as well. Once we got the black and yellow painted in, we're gonna hit it with an aerosol sealer. Now you can use one of the clear matte sealers from a big box store. I'm kind of partial to Leather Sheen because it's got that wax base to it, which really locks the colors into the project. Uh, if you need to see more on how to do that, you guessed it, we did a video a few weeks ago on it. We'll put that link in the description for you. Go check that out. What you don't wanna do is apply any kind of liquid sealer to a freshly painted project. Not all of them will, will lift the paint off. Uh, the lacquer-based ones are really bad about it, but there's always a chance that you're gonna lift paint off if you're using some kind of physical application like tan coat or something like that would require. Let that dry really good and we can start working the orange in and layering those colors. To do that, I'm using a 50-50 mix of Angelus Orange and Angelus Too Thin. What this is gonna do is it's gonna dilute that pigment and allow us to layer the colors in and develop the depth that we're looking for. So a quick tip for you while we're painting that orange in. Because we've added too thin to the paint mixture, it's really thin, right? It's almost watery. Well, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna dip your paintbrush into the paint, then you're gonna wanna blot out the majority of the paint onto a napkin or something like that, then move to the project. If you don't do that, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have too much paint in your paintbrush and it's gonna end up in a very small area of your project. It's gonna be very hard to control, it's gonna be messy. So in an effort to go slow and develop the colors over time, what we wanna do is we wanna blot the majority of that paint out on a napkin, then move to the project. So the secret to develop these layers that we're looking for in that color variation is to work back and forth between the orange and the yellow. Now we've already dilute, diluted the orange. We wanna dilute the yellow as well, but this one's not gonna be quite as thin. We wanna go about 25% too thin in the yellow mixture where it's about 50-50 in the orange. And what that's gonna do is gonna allow you to rock back and forth and slowly over multiple layers develop that color gradation that you're looking for. Worst case scenario though, if you mess it up, just paint the spots white and start over. So one of the things that really brings it to life are those white dots that go all the way around the outside of the wings. The only thing I would caution you about is don't go crazy with them like I did. I went overboard a little bit and had to kind of dial that back a little bit. Hey, if you're enjoying the video, do us a favor, click the like button. Tells me, tells YouTube, tells Weaver that we're doing a good job. Once you've painted in all the dots and you're happy with the way it looks, 
I would suggest that you go back and seal it with leather sheen. Now, I'm not typically a fan of shiny leather, but because of the different little pockets of color that we have in here and the way we beveled it, that little bit of shine's really gonna make the definition pop. And that's one of the keys to super thin leather like this is you need some way to make those small little details and those, that small amount of depth really pop. And leather sheen in this particular instance is gonna do that for us. So we're done with the butterfly, now we can move to the saddle. And the saddle really, I, I was thinking I wanted it to be somewhat subdued and not grab attention. So I wanted to go with a natural color. Brown was a natural choice, you know, like it's perching on a log or a stick or something along those lines. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do just like with a butterfly, dye it brown, which we didn't dye the butterfly brown, but dye it brown, then we're gonna slick the edges, slick the back, and then we can move on to the next step. After you let the glue dry for about 20 minutes, we can move on to stitching. Now, one of the things we need to be careful about here is that if we punch too many holes or if they're too close together, what we're gonna create is a perforation where the wing will just rip off. So to make sure that that doesn't happen, what I did was I took my single tine stitching chisel and created two holes on each side of the body. I just spaced them out far enough that I felt like it wasn't gonna be in any risk of ripping. Then I was able to stitch the wing to the first layer of the saddle. We're getting really close now. We're almost done. So this is a super simple stitch. All we're gonna do is we're gonna start on the underside of the butterfly and we're gonna go out and we're gonna go through the two holes three times. We're gonna end up on the underside so that both of the little pieces of thread are sticking out the bottom side of the butterfly. Then we can tie it off and then do the other side. Once we've got that done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our maul and flatten out the knot. You can heat it up a little bit, that'll help. Then we're gonna apply some glue to that knot. Now, the reason we're doing this is because the pages are gonna be sliding in and out of this saddle, and we don't want the knot to create some kind of catch point in there. Ordinarily, I wouldn't say flatten it out and glue it, but with this particular situation, it's gonna help to make sure that those pages don't get dog-eared and ragged by sliding them in and out of the bookmark. Then we're gonna repeat the entire process. We're gonna take the second part of the saddle, we're gonna tack it down with leather weld again, and then we're gonna stitch it the same way we did before. The only difference here is that we're gonna start our stitch on the inside of the, the saddle, between the saddle and the butterfly, and end up on the inside as well. What that's gonna do for us is make sure that the knot is hidden between the saddle and the butterfly's wing. That's gonna do it for this video. I will see you in the next one. In the meantime, go make something amazing.